Hey guys, and due to popular demand from last night's Got Bot Goes Live live stream show, and if you haven't checked that out, you really should, today we're going to take a look at this guy. It is the Transformers Siege Ratchet, and all the custom work that I did on him in the latest Got Bot True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you're at it... That's right, please hit the notification bell because it lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel, from stop motions to countdowns to discussions to reviews like this one. Check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, Transformers Collectors, NL, and the Autobot Family. And, of course, have a look for me everywhere across social media. And you may be wondering, why am I starting out with instructions? Well, I showed these last night on Got Bot Goes Live. And if you haven't been following the live stream show, you really should. There's even a movement for uh, Starscream Wife to kind of join me on an upcoming review, which we talked about last night. And you can see it there, and you can see it in the comment section for that show. But this was all that I showed last night. Because I was waiting for paint to dry for all of the custom paint apps that I did on Ratchet. He's great at a package, but I wanted him to be a little bit more animation accurate. I don't know if it was a success or a failure. I'll let you guys decide when we head over to the table and take a closer look at this guy. And here, of course, we have the... I don't even know what to kind of call it. I guess the, the, it's a Walgreens exclusive in the U.S. It's an EB Games exclusive here in Canada. Any way you cut it, this is, of course, my custom Siege Ratchet. Why this guy is just not a regular part of, like, Wave 3 or Wave 4, I don't know. Um, and my understanding is that he's not quite released in the States yet. I could be wrong about that, but I'm very happy to have him. And I could have probably done this review a couple of days ago, but I really wanted to get the custom work done to show you guys just how sort of G1 accurate this guy can be because he's not quite G1 accurate. We're going to do some comparisons actually with the images on the back of the package, but speaking of the package, that's probably a good place for us to begin. Before we get there though, you will notice that I have Ratchet right now in his alternate mode, that being his Cybertronian ambulance, I suppose. We will look at this closer but I wanted to kind of start him out in this mode because we've already looked at the conversion going from the way he comes in a package, really, robot to vehicle, when we looked at Ironhide in episode 534. So we're going to do the conversion going in reverse, this time from vehicle back to robot. So if you really need to know what to do to, to, you know, to get from robot to vehicle, check out Ironhide. Otherwise... Uh, we'll kind of see how things work here, and they might even work a little more smoothly than they do on Ironhide. Nevertheless, that's where things stand right now. Let's begin and take a quick look at the packaging first. And indeed, it's as wonderful as Siege packaging gets. We have a uh, nice artwork of Ratchet over here. Uh, you will note that he has the little red line there, and you know, you can see the red on his upper shoulders and his red cuff. You know, there's, there's things here that are a little bit stylized, but he's... I don't know, running into the battlefield to repair someone. That looks like it's probably a wrench or something. Uh, the usual over on this side and on the back we have, of course, the product images. And you will notice that we have like a medical bay, we have ratchet, and then we have his... I'm going to call it ambulance. I'm still going to call it an ambulance. We have that mode. Um, but I like the medical bay. I like that there's a little more versatility here than we just typically get. That being said, don't forget that this guy, just like Ironhide, is covered in 5mm ports, so he can take uh, characters like Cog and, and Six Gun and Brunt and Zetar and whatever and really get filled out and fleshed out. And as has become the norm and the standard, we actually have really good instructions. They're big, they're clear, they're nicely printed. Uh, this is the way instructions always should have been, naturally. My favorite part is this section where we have the stats and the names for all of the accessories that come with Ratchet. And he actually comes with an impressive amount of accessories that can go together in different configurations. Altogether, they look like this. 
We have this white armature. I'm holding onto a five millimeter peg. You can see another five millimeter peg right there. Uh, you can tell that we have pieces put together. There's a handle here. There's a five millimeter peg on the back. There's a five millimeter peg on the back of this piece because it can all come apart to be different things. It's actually really interesting the way that this can go together. Uh, and this is kind of the method that you can use to store it on his back or store it all together in alt mode. We'll see that in a little bit, but we really should kind of talk about each of these pieces and what they're called and what their stats are. And first up, we have the silver painted Magno wrench. It's not strong. Uh, it's not heavy. It's okay for accurate. I, I guess it's used for repairs. So why would you really expect it to be strong? Then we have and then we have Ratchet's Laser Scalpel. Uh, it's fairly strong, fairly accurate, has a decent range. I don't know, if, if in a pinch, if you need to use something to defend yourself, you could use this. Naturally, because it's a laser scalpel, it's used for surgery. And the piece with the arm by itself doesn't really have any stats, but when you put the like wrench on it, it becomes the Protraction Magno Hoist. Uh, it has a great range, it's fairly heavy it's not that strong but i think it's just used to like i don't know remove things like shrapnel or i don't know remove damaged pieces i think that's what the intention is that it's used for repairs to remove stuff or we can change the uh portion on the front and we have the pro traction laser launcher i assume that this is his main source of defense because it's quite strong it has the highest like range possible and it has a pretty strong fire blast. So I think that's, that this is meant to be his primary method of defense. And here we have Ratchet in all of his ambulance-like glory. Uh, you will notice, of course, that even here, we have a couple of little coloration differences. And I just want to kind of show this up close before we sort of compare to the product images. You can still see the lights on top. You will notice specifically the tires in this mode. And when I kind of turn it up a bit, you may notice that we do not have the red section up here and we don't really have the battle damage down around his ankles, feet, anymore. Uh, and in this mode, I'm going to just point this out now, using the, the ports on top, and we do have four of them on top, we can, of course, take this thing and, I don't know, we can stick it in there, or we can, you know, keep it stuck in there, turn it around facing this way. Point is, the accessory, when all put together, can be stored on him for travel in vehicle mode. Here he is next to his mold brother Ironhide and the Classics Ratchet who really looks like mom's minivan coming from a soccer game but she's being a good Samaritan and picking up somebody who's injured along the way and saying come on my baby child I will take you to the hospital where the doctors can look at you. And yes she talks exactly like that. That's, that's the intonation that she has in her voice. And if you couldn't decipher the local colloquial slang that I was just using, baby child is a baby child. Come on, my baby child. And Nanny is offering to take that, that injured child, probably from like the soccer game, to the hospital so that a doctor can take care of them. And speaking of doctors, we have Ratchet here and if you will direct your attention to the product image on the package you can really see the difference especially the tires the tires are more of like a just a kind of a stark white a slight off-white color maybe a super light gray i actually painted the tires black uh and then i painted the rim in the middle silver i've done that on all four you will notice that for the lights on top we have the lights the, uh, I'm kind of going across the light bar and then we have two kind of starts on the outside of the shoulders for me I have the lights on the light bar but I got the starts on the shoulders painted white you will also actually you can't really see it there but the cuffs of his wrists of his hands would be red and they would be showing right here I have them painted white and it makes the whole top of the vehicle white which I like I think it's a little more seamless also you'll notice that there's a little red section up right there at the top of his chest basically that I have also painted white by mixing a gloss white and a satin white and then watering it down to kind of get 
a uh, consistency that matches the rest of the white paint on that translucent plastic. So in this mode, there's actually a significant difference in him. And I, I personally like it more. The only other thing that I haven't mentioned is there's a little red line right here. That's on his shoulder. I actually turned that red line into a uh, red cross. And he has those on his shoulder in the G1 animation. So I wanted him to have them here. And I, I like the way that this looks. To me, this looks like a, a, a very passable ambulance. Now, if you don't do any of that, what is his paint apps? What are his paint apps out of package? And a package, it's no mistaking at all that's ratchet. It's excellent. It is absolutely excellent. They're a solid nine. I honestly believe that with the changes made, they're now a solid 9.75. Why not a 10? Why not perfect? Because uh, even with the changes I made, as you'll see in robot mode, there's still a couple of things that aren't quite right. And there's really sort of no way to make them right without compromising the look of the ambulance mode. And I would not want to do that. I will say this. Uh, I mentioned how I removed the battle damage down on his lower legs and toes. I, it's not bad. You don't need to remove it. I just did it because why not? If you are curious about how to remove that battle damage, I explained it in episode 499. As well, as well, it came to my attention after the fact that sometimes, especially for a stubborn battle damage that doesn't really want to go away, you, you can also use a magic eraser to help the cause, and it actually works pretty nicely. The only thing to be very careful of if you're removing the battle damage here is this red section because it will, the uh, rubbing alcohol, for example, will absolutely take that red off. You have to be very careful with it. But there you go. There's kind of the vehicle mode. 9.75 is a pretty strong start. Now, before we get out of this mode, however, I want to kind of compare him. And this, this part is really for you, Ninja Bill. Uh, shout out to Ninja Bill. I would kind of want to show him next to uh, Ironhide because there are remolded parts and a fair amount. Now, some of it's the same, but even in vehicle mode, you can see these remolded parts. And I want you guys to see exactly what they are. Now then, I have them up here so that you can actually see for yourself what is remolded. I'm going to go through it. I'm probably going to miss some stuff, but at least if I show you kind of all sides here, you can see for yourself exactly what it is. The kind of uh, lower uh, bumper section uh, is absolutely different on both. Uh, the shoulder section, absolutely different. The uh, forearm sections, they are different, especially on Ratchet. The kind of upper bicep section, I think that's the same. Uh, I think that there are similarities between the way the legs fold in, but again, they too are sort of remolded, and I believe the feet might be the same. If they're not, they're really close. But I think the feet might be the same, and the kind of windshield piece, that's the same, as is the hinge that it goes into, this like upper uh, headlight section is the same. On the side, you can probably see that most of it is the same. Uh, the side here is different than the side here, so that is different. I think the lower piece here is the same. I think the part that flaps out here it might have some remolding on it. It's hard to tell where it is differentially painted, but I think it might actually have some remolding on it. <sighs> That's debatable. The, the flap going out is debatable. By the way, the flaps on my iron hide were fine, even though I know they came out for a lot of people. The flaps on Ratchet are absolutely fine. They seem to be very smooth and tolerance really well, at least on my copy. From the bottom, you can see that we have a difference here in this section and this section. As well, there's a difference here in the pelvis of uh, Ratchet and of Ironhide. It's, it's the same tooling, but it's engineered differently. And you can sort of see the difference in the bumper here and the bumper here. I'm going to show the two of them front on in a moment. I think the toes and the, the lower feet are the same. I think the tires are the same. And here's what I was talking about with the bumper being different on both. So we have spent, admittedly, a long time looking at this guy in his ambulance mode, but it's a glorious ambulance mode. 
What else can he do? Well, he does become like a medical bay, medical station type of thing. And it's, I guess it's sort of interesting the way that it's done, it, but simple, absolutely simple. I already, I already showed you how we could place the uh, accessories on him here for traveling. I suppose. We also know because of Ironhide that we can open out these two pieces and there are ports in there that if we are so inclined we can use. But we're not really going to use them this time around. By the way, inside of these is molded I do believe slightly differently than they are on Ironhide as well. If I'm not mistaken, I'll confirm that in a second when we open it off. But I think the inside of the leg is actually molded unique as well. So to put them in medical bay mode, we, <laughs> if I can do it, there, we flip those down and in looking in there and looking at Ironhide, I can confirm that the molded detail inside here is indeed different. Now, now that we have that done, the key to the medical bay mode is to get the arms out, which is a little, little bit tricky. Especially when you have custom paint done on them, but I'm going to work to get them out here for you. Then we close this back up, and I believe we're supposed to bring these down, maybe, if I'm not mistaken. We are supposed to bring those down on the side, where we fold these in. I do believe, and the arms. We'll just fold down on the side and you turn them so that the uh, five millimeter port is up top like that. Can these, I think these also tap together. My apologies there for that little cut, uh, but I needed to get the legs together. This is what we have. Then we take his accessories and we're supposed to Put the laser scalpel over there, and then using the armature, we're supposed to put this piece up here. And I suppose you would put like an injured Autobot here on the, the bed, and there is your medical bay. Doing the conversion to the medical bay was simple because you're basically opening up the legs flipping out the arms and closing up the legs. I was a little more delicate with it because I do have the custom paint apps to consider, but it's easy to get there, no problem. It's a bit iffy if it's a bed for, you know, an injured Autobot, but you know, whatever, be creative, man. So the lower body at this point really is done. Um, you know, I mean, at this point I can separate the legs and the lower body is done. The upper body, however, is not quite done. We need to flip that uh, bumper down and then we're going to have to turn this piece around. But you want to be careful doing it because it, the, t the clearance for the pelvis here is really not done well, like it's, it's just a millimeter or so off, it'll clear it no problem. The only reason I need to, again, be delicate with it is because I do have the custom paint apps to consider. So, by the way, this piece turns easier on this guy than it did on Ironhide, so I, I totally, absolutely dig that. The arms, I don't know, I'm gonna get them down like this out of the way, I believe. And hopefully, maybe, maybe, ooh. You have to bear with me a minute here, guys, because I'm I'm trying to be trying to be delicate here. There, and then I turn this around. Then I can put this arm down. That looked more complicated than it really is because I'm trying to be really careful with the whole kind of pelvis section there. So like, bear with me slightly. But here you can now like orient those arms in the proper position. We bring this forward and in package for, actually I'll get his head up while we're at it. Get the head up, push, if you didn't already push the, the uh, bumper up. Now, now out of package, uh, the front window's like this, but that's not exactly correct. 
the way it's supposed to be is you use this hinge in here, this white hinge in here, and there's a ridge on the clear plastic that goes into two little slots right there. You bring this up, you put it into the slots, and you get this sort of silhouette here. And at the end of the day, boom, here we have Ratchet in his robot mode, and here he is next to Siege Ironhide, and again, we can see the differences in the molded detailing. The lower legs are molded differently. The feet are the same. The uh, thighs are, I believe, the same. The pelvis is different. The hip pelvis section is different. The tummy chest section, the same. The uh, detail inside behind the window, I believe that's the same. The bumper on the back is different. The head is different. The shoulders are different, though the hinge that the shoulders are on is the same. The biceps, I think, are the same. The hands, I think, think are the same. The forearms are different. In fact, on one of Ratchet's, we have actual, it's like um, medical tools on like a medical tray on one of his arms. Now, I've seen it colored in with detail. It looks great. I didn't do it because he doesn't have that naturally on his arm in the animation. So I left it, but it is extra detail that's on there. And if you want to kind of custom paint it, hey man, go for it. Now, I heard a couple of people say, hey, with this remolded detail, it shows that they love the fans. I don't think that this shows that they love the fans. I think they're just doing exactly what they should do. For the, the price increase that they've had, the absolute least you can do, if you're going to use the same tooling, which I'm fine with, these two should use the same tooling because they're, you know, it's like the, the, the Datsun Trio or the Seekers. Like, they, they should use the exact same kind of tooling. But, you know what? Honestly... Doing the remolding makes sense. It lets the mold belong to each of them. I like seeing it. I'm cool with the same tooling, but the very least you can do for a higher price point is give us something new, like new remolding. More than just the head, man. More than just the head. On the side, you can see that we have some remolding, but, I mean, nothing to get excited about. And on the back, again, you can see that the bumper piece is different, but besides that, the core of the body is pretty similar. By the way, you might notice that this is a little bit of an off-white, so to speak. And that little bit of an off-white is on many sections of this guy. Like, all the white is not the same on him. But it all sort of flows really nicely to give us a really nice-looking ratchet. Since we have ratchet back on here, I will note that you can take his combined accessories. And you can just put them there on his back, no problem. Uh, you know, the guy has one, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight, nine, I don't know, nine, ten, ten or eleven ports on him. So I, I'm saying you can put it on the back, but you can put it on his shoulder if you want. Put it on his arm, whatever. Put it in his hand. So there's a lot of ports here, and I think it looks really good. And here he is next to Classics Ratchet. Um... <laughs> They're really a comparison. Look, I don't, I don't mind the classics mold. A lot of people give it a lot of flack. I never mind it. I thought that it embodied the character well for the time. I don't have the Unite Warriors ratchet, though. I think the uh, use of um, first aid for that kind of iteration of Ratchet was fine. I think it's a great looking Ratchet and a lot of people have actually gotten the uh, Unite Warrior Sky Rain specifically to get that Ratchet. But, again, I don't think it's quite as good as this one. That being said, if you're happy with the Classics or you're happy with the Unite Warriors, Warriors and you're like, you know what, Siege is not my bag or it's, you know, it's, I don't want to go having to hunt this guy down, blah, 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 then, you know, I, like, I, I get it. But, but, he is quite excellent. He's getting 9.75. What about his articulation? Well, for Deluxe, he can do it all, man. I mean, just like Ironhide did. We have a head that can go left, right. It can look a little up and a little down. It's more of a wiggle up, though. Not much up. Uh, the arms can go all the way around, way, way out. 90 degrees at the elbow, bicep swivel, wrist rotation, waist swivel. Uh, what else do we have here? Legs all the way out to the side. They can go well forward, well well back if you get it past the accessory. Uh, thigh swivel, 90 degrees at the knee, super deep ankle tilts. 
So, yeah, um, 10. Honestly, from a deluxe, what else could you want? I mean, you know, individually articulated fingers? I, I, you know, if you really want to nitpick, but like for a deluxe, what do you expect? 10. What about the transformation? It's all easy, man, 10. Here's the thing. When we have Ironhide next to this guy, I think that Ironhide ekes out a win because he's just ever so slightly more accurate. That's it. Besides that, this is a fantastic mold. It really is an excellent, excellent mold. But, of course, the question has to be asked, as excellent as this is with an overall score of, you know, taking into account a 9.75, a 10, and a 10, overall score of easily like a 9.9, 9.95, whatever, is he guilty or innocent? By the numbers, Classics Ratchet clocks in at 113 grams. He also doesn't have uh, an elbow that can go to 90 degrees, and he doesn't have wrist swivel, even though he has, like, separate hands from his forearms. The Siege, on the other hand, clocks in at 106, so while he's not quite as heavy as the Classics, I can also say that that mold that was used for him, that uh, first aid mold that was used for him uh, in the Unite Warrior set, that actually clocks in at about 99 or 100 grams. So this guy is a little bit lighter, has a little bit less mass than the Classics, but it has more mass than the Combiner Wars iteration. Is he guilty or innocent? Well, I defer to the judges. You know how this goes by now. I ask you, my most esteemed Quintesson judges, in light of everything we know now about Siege Ratchet, and in light of the fact that Ironhide was indeed innocent, is Ratchet guilty or innocent of the recent Siege price increase? Innocent. Well, there you have it. Ratchet is innocent. Absolutely innocent. I said with Ironhide, if you only get one figure from Wave 2, get Ironhide. If you only get one figure in 2019, get Ironhide because he was perfect. Although since then, we've also looked at Brunt, and Brunt scored extremely strong, and now we have Ratchet scoring extremely strong. Maybe as time goes on, the Siege line is actually indeed getting better. Nevertheless, whether you do custom paint work like I did or not, Ratchet is perhaps a definitive Ratchet for many people with their collection. At least anybody who is a mainline collector. So, I was kidding earlier when I said I didn't know if it was a success or a failure. I think this is an absolute success. The only paint app that I did that I forgot to mention is there are red squares down on his feet. I also did them in white. White is super duper hard to work with. You really need to prime it first. So, I actually primed the areas with uh, silver. And then I paint them over with white. Uh, usually it's a glass, but in this case I wanted to match the sort of matte that's on him where there is paint, especially on the translucent plastic. So I mixed some matte and some glass to give texture, and then I sort of watered it down to reduce um, paint lines. And I love the end result. To me this is quintessentially ratchet. The articulation is amazing, the silhouette is near on perfect, and the colors of the package, while absolutely excellent, the stickler in me for kind of as accurate as I can possibly get something wanted me to sort of push things just a little bit further. I could not get rid of the red on these sections on the legs because if I did, it would really kind of make the ambulance mode look way too bland. So that sort of needs to stay there. Uh, same with the red up here on the shoulders, like they're the light bar, so they kind of need to stay there. But I think that I did as close to accurate for robot mode as really I'm going to be able to get. I like them. I'm a big fan, and I know that there are a couple of other Ratchet iterations, and if you're happy with them, fine. But I think that the definitive version, especially for anyone who is like a Generations type of collector, got to be this guy. He's beautiful, man. Absolutely beautiful, and an absolute win for the Siege line. Like the Quintesson said, the guy is actually innocent. Anyway, let me know what you think about this guy. Are you a fan of the mold? Are you a fan of Ratchet or not? You know, I love to hear from you guys. As always, I'm going to say, please hit that subscribe button. It helps me out so very much. And if you're in a position to help the channel to grow, there is a donation link down in the description. And as always, 
I very much look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit either in the live streams at the stop motion premieres or right here inside the videos.